If you've ever brought a banana on board a ship, I have some bad news for you. Hey, history heroes! I'm Tempest, and welcome to Time with Tempest, where today we're going to be talking about folklore on the high seas. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel to see what hidden history I uncover next. Now, let's begin our story. When sailing on the high seas, superstitions and the supernatural are no laughing matter. To some, it's a matter of life or death. That's because sailing sometimes is a matter of life and death. But just how did so many ill omens and good luck charms come about? Can they be explained in a rational way? Or are there simply some things in life that cannot be explained? Let's dive into some of the most famous sailing superstitions and find out. This first one is personal. Women were considered very bad luck on ships, especially redheads. It was thought that women angered the sea, who would summon violent storms and crashing waves to express their displeasure. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, women who bared their breast were considered to calm the sea, and thus many mastheads are built out of half-naked women. The origins of the women are bad luck superstition is probably just bad luck. Stormy weather may have plagued a ship that had a woman aboard, and sailors may have thought, since the only factor that changed from their last voyage was the presence of a woman, that must be the source of bad luck. In a more practical sense, women were also not very welcome on board, as they served as a distraction to the all-male crew. There may have been infighting among the crew causing a lack of work, or a crew member may be so distracted he makes a dangerous, even deadly error. Women were also not used to being at sea and could often be sick, which was obviously seen as a negative trait, furthering the negativity surrounding women at sea. As for redheads, we've pretty much always been seen as bad luck. Associations with the supernatural and even the devil himself are all part of redhead lore, with Judas often depicted in Renaissance art as a redhead, and many witches, vampires, and all manner of supernatural beings bearing the trademark red hair. Even before the ship left port, a sailor was careful to avoid us gingers. And it was said the only way to avoid their bad luck was to approach them and speak to them before they spoke to you. Moving on from humans to animals, we come across some truly strange superstitions involving albatross, cormorants, and cats. Let's start with the albatross a surprisingly large seabird with a surprisingly long lifespan. Albatross can be found on the northern Pacific coast, as well as coasts throughout the Southern Ocean, so any ship passing through would have a fair chance of catching a glimpse of this beautiful bird. But beware! According to a seafarer superstition, albatross are the souls of those lost at sea. Because of this, it is extremely bad luck to kill or even harass one. While there is no science behind this, it's still seen as a very negative thing to kill an animal for no particular reason. But it is extremely good luck to have one follow your ship, which is something that albatross have actually been known to do. These albatross myths come from a famous poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, written in 1798. In it, an albatross follows a ship. However, for whatever reason, a mariner shoots the albatross with a crossbow. Because of this, the crew believe the ship is cursed. And true to form, they begin to experience horrible things. Eventually, the crew runs out of fresh water and places the dead albatross around the mariner's neck to show his guilt. Then the poem veers off into meeting death and his companion, who is a fate worse than death. The crew members die, and the mariner is forced to watch their corpses for a week, but then begins to look at the nature around him appreciating it, instead of hating it. At this, the albatross falls from his neck, his crew is possessed by spirits, and takes him near his homeland, where the ship sinks into a whirlpool. Rescued by a hermit, he is then forced to wander the earth, forever telling his story and teaching his lesson to anyone he meets. So as you can imagine, any mariner who heard that story would be a little weary of harming an albatross, but delighted by the appearance of one trailing his ship. There is a similar story in Scandinavian folklore regarding cormorants, which is probably the inspiration for the albatross folklore. Cormorants are believed to be the souls of those lost at sea. Many take comfort in their presence, as they believe their loved ones are simply visiting and wishing them well. But there are other animals that are beloved by sailors all over the world and considered very good luck. And that is... the cat. 
Current archaeological finds reveal that ancient Egyptian cats began spreading throughout trade routes along the Mediterranean in the 8th century BCE. Fast forward to the Vikings, and their cats began traveling all along their trade routes. Then, in the Age of Discovery, from the 15th century to the 18th century, cats began seeing parts of the world that had never been explored before. And the reason these cats were cruising? Well, most importantly, they were killing rodents. Any food for trade or consumption, as well as rope, wood, and wiring, was fair game for rodents. But if a cat was on board, the ship was safe from those pesky pests. Additionally, cats provided comfort and companionship to those at sea, who were often away from home for long periods of time. Sailors considered them to be good luck charms, and thus, cats often live in the lap of luxury on ships. If the cat is happy and well cared for, it will exude the luck that the sailors crave. But some cats are luckier than others. Polydactyl cats, or fat feet cats, are cats with extra toes who are thought to have been better at catching pests, better with balance, and of course, better with luck. I guess more beans equals more luck. Sailors' wives often kept cats as pets, as they believed the cat would protect their husband even from afar. Cats were also said to protect ships from bad weather, as well as predict them. Or they could also start storms with magic in their tails. As silly as this sounds, it's actually well-rooted in science. You see, cats can detect even the smallest changes in barometric pressure, which drops right before a storm. When that change is detected, cats get restless and nervous, and a common trait cats have when experiencing these emotions is fast tail swishing. So an observant sailor could detect an oncoming storm via changes in the ship cat's behavior. But now, history heroes, we must move on to a dangerous and even deadly superstition. That's right, we're talking about bananas. In the heyday of merchant trading in the 18th and 19th centuries, when ships were lost at sea, hardly any remnant was ever found, except for bananas. But in all seriousness, imagine ships keep disappearing and all you find is bananas floating where a ship once stood, like some ominous yellow calling card of death you would start to think something was sus with those bananas too. And you certainly wouldn't want them on your ship. Here's the thing, the reason that bananas were all that was left was because bananas were the only part of the cargo that usually floated. Plus, the reason ships carrying bananas may have disappeared more than other ships is because bananas go bad, fast. Ships would need to be as quick as possible so they could reach their destination before the bananas spoil. And that may have led to repairs being ignored, careless accidents caused by distraction, or ships trying to fight through a storm because they refuse to be slowed down. Another reason this freaky fruit is considered bad luck is because they carry venomous insects, and seeing spiders crawling around cargo would scare any sailor. Especially if they laid eggs and multiplied while on board, increasing the risk for the crew to be bitten. And if they were bitten, there wasn't exactly a cure on board so they either fought through the venom or succumbed to it. Even though bananas aren't as risky anymore to carry as cargo, many sailors still believe they're bad luck. And even some recreational captains refuse to have them on board as a snack. Better safe than sorry. And finally, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the creatures that supposedly lurk in the sea. We're talking about the Kraken and mermaids. The Kraken is essentially a giant squid or octopus from Scandinavian folklore. It can be found in several Norse sagas and is described as attacking ships passing near the coasts of Greenland and Norway. This legend almost certainly came about due to sightings of giant squid in those areas, which actually have been known to attack ships. Giant squid were known even in ancient times, being written about by Aristotle in the 4th century BCE. However, due to their mythic description and the legend of the Kraken, these were written off as fantasy, even when they occasionally washed up on shore. It wasn't until the 19th century when things really kicked off. In 1861, a ship sailing near the Canary Islands sighted the impossible, a giant squid. Floating near the surface and most likely sick, injured, or dying, the squid dove and resurfaced near the ship repeatedly over the course of three hours. The ship's captain ordered it shot, but it had little effect. Finally, a sailor harpooned it and attempted to haul it onto the ship, but the weight of the squid, being pulled by a single rope lassoed around its middle, 
caused it to be cut in half, leaving only the tail end. This encounter is significant because not only did it prove the existence of the supposed Kraken, but a report of the encounter was read by Jules Verne, who went on to write about giant squid in his book, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Ten years later, proof of the creature was undeniable when 19 live and dead giant squid were found in the 1870s in Newfoundland. A Yale scientist was able to study them and all but confirmed that the Kraken was actually kind of sort of real. As for our other, less slimy creature, mermaids are sadly not rooted in science. Originally, they were sirens, a half-bird, half-woman hybrid from Greek mythology. But gradually, that shifted into a half-fish, half-woman hybrid. Despite their dissimilar outward appearance, they do share similar traits, such as luring men to their death with their beautiful ballads. The first story of a mermaid appeared in 1000 BCE in Assyria. The story goes that a goddess fell in love with a mortal shepherd and accidentally killed him. In her grief, she jumped into a lake and turned into a fish, but the water could not conceal her divine beauty, and thus only half her body became a fish. For sailors, mermaids are often terrible creatures who want nothing more than to kill men. However, some British folklore states that mermaids can help humans cure diseases or even fall in love with them. Regardless, most sailors were terrified to encounter one as they almost certainly spelled doom. Unfortunately, there isn't much science to prove the existence of mermaids, though some argue that mermaid sightings were simply manatees, seals, or even dugongs but they are firmly cemented into the folklore of most cultures and have made their way into pop culture to the point where most people in the world know what a mermaid is. These are just some of the superstitions and myths surrounding the sea. When sailing is treacherous and sometimes deadly, it's no wonder good luck and bad luck were so important to the crew on board. And while some are wonderful examples of folklore, others are pretty well rooted in fact and science. So the next time your cat is swishing its tail, keep a weather eye on the horizon and maybe batten down the hatches. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please remember to subscribe, distribute your delight, or leave your calling card in the comments below because the YouTube algorithm gods demand it. Until next time, stay curious, history heroes. これ Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs>